Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video on the channel. Today, we're taking a look at six tips that are really gonna help you improve in Brawl Stars. Of course, before we get into it, make sure you subscribe. 60% of you guys are not subscribed. Make sure you're using code time if you're anything up in the new shop and let's get right into it. Okay, so tip number one then is gonna be about vision gear. So of course, people know the vision gear is gonna allow you to see the enemy for two seconds, basically after you hit them inside a bush. But also, uh, when Leon uses super, if you hit him, you will see him for two seconds after and you can basically tell exactly kind of which direction he's going. Going, so you know if he's going to attack you or one of your teammates. So definitely make sure you're using the vision gear if you are facing a Leon, especially with brawlers like Jean um, that can scan very well. Some other brawlers like Pam, Spike, Lola, especially with those. But probably most of the time, um, if you're against a Leon with kind of all brawlers. And also this actually works for Sandy as well. When you use that Sandy super, if you are using the vision gear and you hit anyone inside that Sandy super, you're going to be able to see them for two seconds, which again, you can tell exactly where they're going and it's going to be really really helpful but if you are using those a single target for us like bell piper b probably not going to want to go vision gears on open maps if you do face a leon just because you're still not going to get too much value out of it by the way this also works for leon's gadget as well his uh, lollipop drop which is really really helpful of course there is one brawler in the game you don't need to use vision gear for and that is crow because you can already see the enemies when you poison them but before we get into the next tip today's video was sponsored by Diablo Immortal. Diablo Immortal is the largest Diablo game that Blizzard has released. One of my favorite features has to be the amazing campaign where you can choose to play solo or play with other players. It's also cross-platform, which means you can play on iOS, Android, or PC. While there is in-game purchases, you definitely can complete the story without spending any money, which is great for free-to-play players. So what are you waiting for? Make sure to download Diablo Immortal right now using my link at the top of the description, and let's get back into the video. Now, tip number two is going to be about curve how to dodge it, how to counter people that know how to dodge it as well. So most of the time when uh, Spike shoots you, you're going to be standing behind the shot. There are two main spots you need to learn to essentially dodge. So slightly off the center to the left and obviously the right as well. They're going to be the two spots that you want to learn to kind of dodge curveball. Of course, it does take some practice and you're not going to be able to learn how to do it just by me telling you. You're going to have to go into some practice with a friend or something like that. Just go into a 1v1 room, both play Spike. You can get a ton of practice in this way and kind of learn how to dodge it pretty easily. But you can also dodge a curveball. Other ways, it doesn't have to be these two spots. You can obviously dodge it wherever, but these two are like the most common that all the pros kind of know. Uh, you can dodge it on the sides and above as well, but it does take a ton of practice. I can do it occasionally. I can consistently dodge um, those bomb two spots, like uh, I'd say like 90 to 100% of the times on an open map. So then how do you counter someone who knows how to dodge a curveball? Uh, it's pretty easy, really. Um, it's really, really tough have to dodge two curveball shots at the same time. So what we have to do is kind of quickly shoot out two shots in different spots. And if you're doing the same spot, they're going to dodge it easily. So you kind of got to split the shots up, do them very quickly after each other, and you should be able to hit them at least once. Okay, so coming in at number three then. So this tip, really important, but sounds very, very simple. Not eating Surge Super. So this one, uh, if you're playing competitive uh, like we do, basically everyone will be, you know, focusing on not beating that Surge Super, cooling out constantly where he is. It only takes three shots for him to get that Super, that first Super, uh, which is so, so important for him. It basically, Surge with max upgrades, one of the best problems in the game. Surge without uh, any upgrades is a slow walking trash can. It's absolutely awful. So you really have to focus on not beating that surge your whole team has to focus on it because if you can play the whole game the whole you know two three minutes whatever without surge getting super there's a high a very very high chance that you're gonna be able to win that game so this does kind of work with other brawlers as well like penny and tara and stuff but i feel like it's so so important with surge just because of the surge the way surge is built um that yeah you just have to not feed surge now obviously if you're playing a tank into surge it's going to be very very difficult to not feed him so obviously in this case you are probably we're gonna have to feed him quite early on. Now, tip number four is gonna be to do with Gale's Twister gadget. So this is something I haven't really seen a lot of people speak about, but I feel like it's only a matter of time until we see some crazy playing competitive involving this gadget. Now, in particular, I'm not actually using it, but actually playing against it. So when someone puts this Twister gadget down, what it does is it gives you a great opportunity to essentially use it to dodge shots, dodge supers, um, but more importantly, kind of win games. Because if you use this, essentially if you walk into 
of the super, you jump up and it takes you off the map. So it means you can, as I said, avoid supers, avoid shots, um, but in particular, kind of make clutch plays and knockout and stuff. And I think I've seen a kind of a clip of this being used, uh, but it could definitely help. Say a gene's gonna pull you, you can go into the gadget, right? If there's like, obviously there's not gonna be a gadget down every time. But when there is a gadget there, you can, you know, use this as an opportunity to potentially dodge a gal super, because quite, quite often a gal put a gadget down and get super and try to super you. Um, and if you're a tank, obviously, you run into that gadget and now you jumped in the air, you avoid, avoided that gal super, you can stay alive for longer, help your teammates out. So this also works for kind of, you know, other brawlers. Um, if there is that twister on the ground, you can avoid like Tara supers and gene supers and stuff like that. And just hyper shots in general, just shots. But yeah, mainly it's going to work for that gal super because usually gal is going to be pretty close uh, when that twister is put down. Okay, so coming in at number five, then we have playing to overtime in Brawl Ball. So let me explain this one a little bit. Um, obviously in OT, everything is gone. Everything's destroyed. A completely open map. So if you have a longer range comp, you're going to benefit by actually waiting to overtime. Of course, if you're struggling, if you're dominating the enemy team, just, you know, go ahead and score. It's not going to make too much of a difference. But if you are struggling, if they have a lot of short range brawlers, if they have, you know, a lot of throwers, just note that it's going to be a lot easier for you to probably win if you say corner the ball, play to overtime. Obviously, you know, you're going to probably be in spawn if you're getting out comped until overtime. So you've got to make sure you're cycling your spawns well so you don't all die at the same time. And you want to die kind of one by one. So you have someone respawning, able to stop the goal, keep the ball in the corner, and then try as much as you can to play for the overtime where it's going to be beneficial for your comp. Okay, now tip number six is going to be about the most important thing in a brawl right now, which is the draft phase. Obviously, this can be very, very simplified, but you never want to pick two tanks. You never want to pick two weak brawlers together if your opponent has a pick left, because if you pick two tanks, it's going to give them an easy shell pick. And when I say tanks, I mean anything like Ash, Bull, Buzz, any kind of tank you can think of. And when I say weak brawlers, I mean like throwers, I mean Pipers, I mean Brocks, anything that's going to be weak and aggressive brawlers or just low HP in general. Of course, if your opponent does have picks left, you want to kind of anticipate what they're going to pick. Think what would you, what would you pick? And also think about um, what kind of easy counters do they have and try and make sure your comp is not easily countered by just one brawler. Try and make sure it's well-rounded and that's going to help you out a lot in the draft phase. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace.